Before we come to take the story of Adam and Eve in detail and see how we can interpret the elements of it and the parts of it and how it would very much fit theologically and does not disagree with uh, evolution and evolution does not agree with the story of the Bible, I wanted to clarify in more detail the why and the how and what Francis Bacon told us about nature and scriptures. Francis Bacon came and said, listen, God gave us two absolutely correct books. One of them is nature. The other one is scriptures. What the revelation of God through Jesus Christ and the prophets that came before him and the church. So we have scriptures and we have nature. Both are absolutely correct because they are uh, gifts from God to us. And God must be true in all what is in nature, because he made it simply, we can't argue. And God, with his message in the Bible, must be also true, because it is God. The interpretation of nature is what we call science. The interpretation of scriptures is what we call theology. Now, there is no fight between nature and the Bible. The fight is between the interpreters of these two books. The scientists, if they become narrow-minded or arrogant atheists who just want to fight against the idea of believing in God, or theologians when they become narrow-minded and they insist that either you take everything written is, ab is absolutely literal in the Bible or you've rejected the biblical message altogether, when, when these two narrow-minded groups from this group and that group start to argue together, they create the difficulties, they create the conflict. But it is not really there, and it is not between nature and the Bible. In fact, the misunderstanding is because of fear of both. The atheists, of course, don't like the idea of God, and they believe that's a retarded idea that's going to stop us thinking and developing, and they might have other uh, bad motives, I don't know, leave that out now. The theologians who try to be the creationists or only think literally about the Bible, the difficulty is they cannot accept the difficulty, and it is a great difficulty, to understand what could be literal, what could be symbolic. Another point, until 100 or 150 years ago, and even until now in the minds of some people, they don't understand science, and we didn't understand science as we understand it now. So the only uh, source of information and knowledge was the Bible. So this is the only trusted source. Therefore, it is more difficult to accept parts as symbolic, parts as uh, real. Now, we come here now to the word true. And can true mean more than one thing? Yes, it can. We have a difference between the word true and exact and true but not exact. I'll give examples. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was incarnated 20 centuries ago. We saw him. He lived with us. He was crucified at the time of Pontius Pilate. He was seen alive three days later by his friends when after they went and saw the grave empty. They saw him and witnessed to him rising and disappearing from their eyes. They sat and they spoke with him. He appeared to them for 40 days. This is literal history. This is true and exact. Yet Jesus Christ spoke of himself and said, I am the door of the sheep. I am the vine. I am the cornerstone. Yet he's not a wood or a wooden door. He's not a piece of stone and he's not a tree known as the vine. But these are true descriptions of functions that cannot be described to us in simple words. So he's trying to describe it to simple people who are either uh, fishermen or uh, peasants and farmers. And at that time there were no scientists. So he was trying to simplify meanings. I am the source of life. Like what? Like the tree gives the sap of life into the fruits and the leaves. Do you understand? Yes, we can comprehend this. 
Now, I am the water of life. It doesn't mean that uh, Jesus is a stream of water or a river. But it means that I give you life as water gives life to your bodies. Can you understand? Yes, we can. I'm the cornerstone means I'm the most important bit that keeps an arch standing. The cornerstone is what they put in the top of the arch, which supports the whole arch, otherwise it falls. So I'm the one that without me you can't do anything. So he's using that metaphor. So metaphors are not fiction and not a lie. They are true, but not exact. Now the difficulty is people when they want to say it is real or true, it means it has to be absolutely literally. He said he took soil from the, from the ground and made Adam. Therefore, if it is true, he must have done exactly that. A very intelligent, simple idea that Amber Beeman, one of our bishops in the Coptic Orthodox Church, said in one of his tapes, it's the 49th of a series of 70 tapes that he gave us before he went to heaven. And he said in that, whether God created man in an instant or in millions of years by evolution, it's the same thing. And you'll find that Saint Basilius of the Basil, the great of the fourth century, said exactly the same thing. Call it a, a day, call it eternity, not even a thousand, a day like a thousand years, a thousand years like a, like a day, but call it a day or call it eternity, you are talking the same thing. When we discover something in this universe, we're discovering only what God has created. So whether God created man, yes, he created me from soil because my body is soil. It's elements of earth and he instilled something else in it. We call it the consciousness, the, the non-material part of my being. Fine, that is also something that we cannot study by science because it is not material. Science can only study what is material. So God created me out of soil. Yes, he instilled something else in it, which is not material. Yes, all agreed. Whether he did this in million years or in an instant, it's the same. Now, Amber Beeman said it very nicely. He said, why can't you accept that these high primates or these high apes or ape mans or whatever they were that became gradually conscious into a human being that comprehends himself, nature and corresponds with God? Why can't you accept that these animals are also soil? They are nothing but soil, dust. All what we carry in our body is soil. It is the elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus. They didn't know what it was. There were four elements at the time of when the Bible was written. Uh, earth, which is soil, water, air, and fire. These were the only elements they understood. They didn't understand the details of the compounds and elements that made that. So they wanted to, um, to say that, yes, we've seen man when he dies, he becomes soil again. And he was made from soil. Fine, so God told us that. That does not negate the fact that we could have evolved from other beings. We have nothing in nature to say that a living being has appeared out of nothing or out of a living, a non-living something. Every animal has either been in an egg and the egg hatched or he has an umbilical Umbilicus, which was connected to an umbilical cord to a womb which bore him and gave him birth. To say that Adam and Eve were two human beings without an umbilicus whom God made just instantly, but yes, we can agree, as some people say, that every other being could have come and uh, evolved uh, as, as Darwin and the people who came after him said, but except man. He's a very special thing. God must have created him out of dust. Well, thank you very much. Why can't you understand that the ape is more precious and more uh, glorious being as an animal than the simple carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen? And that is still dust in the language of 3,000 years ago. So I want to say here that there is no problem if you understand the symbolism. And we will come to more and more of the symbols of the story and how if you take them literally, you will have questions that he cannot answer at all. We will come to these questions one by one later.